Shalom Chabrim, I'm Stephen Bernoulli, you're watching Israeli News Live now after a couple of days after the massive 7.1 earthquake in Mexico. That of course was followed by over an 8.0 earthquake there off the coast of Mexico just about a week or so ago. Uh, now the president of Mexico is talking about that the city definitely needs to move forward uh, and the most critical thing right now is saving lives. This article right here on ABC News, the latest Mexico City says 52 saved from quake ruins. Uh, the latest on a major earthquake that struck Mexico uh, at 2.10 p.m. The Mexico City gover uh, government says 52 people have been rescued from the rubble of collapsed buildings in the capital following Tuesday's powerful earthquake. The city's social development Department tweeted the number Wednesday afternoon on uh, and added, we won't stop. Uh, as a response to that, Israel, which they've been doing quite often here lately, has responded sending out their own, mili their own uh, Israeli military search and rescue organizations in order to help the Mexica uh, Mexican recovery effort there. Uh, certainly applaud Israel for doing this, as many other nations no doubt will contribute as well. But in the aftermath of the lethal, lethal 7.1 magnitude earthquake that struck Mexico on Tuesday, Israel is extending its support to its Latin American neighbor and sending both the IDF as well as Mexico's base Zaka team, Israel's primary rescue and recovery volunteer organization to assist the victims of disaster. Uh, of course, this here being that team right there that Israel sent over to Mexico in the help of the search and rescue operations. Uh, moving on into other news, Russia, uh, actually right here, this video right here, test launches a, a ICBM thing is kind of like in a rogue place there in the middle of the woods, middle of nowhere, but here goes their ICBM. But you know what's kind of interesting? You don't hear a whole lot of talk about doing sanctions against Russia as they do that. Not to say that there's not already sanctions against Russia, uh, but uh, we definitely see it when it comes to Kim Jong-un. And understandably so, it's a new nation with nuclear weapons and certainly a problem for many. When it comes to that, uh, I want to also share with you this tweet right here from Partisan Girl on her uh, channel here about the UN and, uh, excuse me, shameful at UN Hader Al Abadi uh, says here buses full of ISIS families taken to the Chald uh, Chaldean Christian town of Tel Kep, that's in uh, Iraq, or Tel Kaif is what it says there. Uh, let me just show you this. Of course, it's taken, I guess, with a cell phone there. You can just see the long, long, long line of buses there uh, that are en route. Another picture there, as far as the eye can see across the countryside, it's majorly long lines of buses being sent over to a Christian town in Iraq. Now, whether or not these Christians are openly accepting these ISIS militants, or will they end up turning on these Christian families and obliterating them in Iraq. That only remains to be seen, but it was very troubling to see that particular news coming out of, uh, out of Syria there. Uh, Belarus strengthens a warning against Russia sharpening the confrontation and joint military exercises there inside of Belarus. So that basically becoming a front line of defense for the uh, Russian Federation to let them know if indeed Europe is planning on doing an invasion. Kind of an interesting article about that right there. And then Der Azard, uh, we see the photos here on this particular uh, website called jforum.fr. It's a French article. We actually did the translation of this, was looking at this this morning. All American supplied armaments, as far as the eye can see as well on this particular um, movement of the Kurds moving in military equipment down towards Der Azard. Definitely the U.S. backing the Free Syrian Army and the Kurds there to take over as much territory as possible so none of the oil gains are lost. Um, and then one final article on our news broadcast here, U.S. defenseless against ballistic missile as Trump threatens to destroy North Korea. That's an article coming out on Sputnik saying that the North Korean missiles were flying so high that there's not a single defense shield that can reach it. Now, I would have to say, though, that that's at its... Uh, flying altitude doesn't mean that it can't be intercepted on its way back in or on its way up either way. But uh, 
article does speak about this. And on Tuesday, U.S. President Donald Trump threatened to totally destroy North Korea if Pyongyang does not stop its nuclear missile test. In fact, the U.S. missile defense system is incapable of shooting down North Korean missiles, according to the American expert on nuclear weapons, Joe uh, Serencion. Uh, neither the U.S. nor Japan could have intercepted the missiles launched by North Korea last week because none of the theater ballistic missile defense weapons in existence could hit a target at such an altitude, uh, Cernan Sion wrote on a peace defense one. On September 15th, South Korea and Japan said that the North Korea fired the Hosong-12 ballistic missile. It reached an altitude of 770 kilometers and traveled 3,700 kilometers before falling into the Pacific Ocean, according to the South Korean Defense Ministry. It is hundreds of kilometers too high for the Aegis intercepts deployed on Navy ships off Japan, even higher for the THAAD system in South Korea and Guam, way too high for the Patriot system in Japan, which engaged largely within the atmosphere uh, Serencion pointed out, all of the three missile defense systems are designed to intercept a missile in the post-mid-course or terminal phase. In theory, an attempt could be made to intercept the missile just after the launch. However, according to the expert, it would be quite unrealistic. There is almost no chance of hitting a North Korea missile on its way up unless an Aegis ship was deployed very close to the launch point, perhaps in North Korean waters. Even then, it would have to chase the missile, a race it is unlikely to win in the only one or two minutes of warning time any system would have. The probability of successful engagement drops close to zero, the article read. That's a bit disturbing, friends. I mean, very much disturbing uh, to hear something like this. And maybe one reason why we have not seen a, a, an all-out assault as of yet on North Korea one thing, though, I'm sure, though, if the U.S. does an assault on North Korea, their main objective will be to try to stop them completely. Anyway, I'm Stephen Benoon. Shana Tova. It is actually the beginning of the Jewish New Year, and I've actually done a special broadcast over on the Noon Institute. You may want to catch that talking about Rosh Hashanah. Is it really the New Year? And why do we call it the new year if it's not the new year? Anyway, hug some to all my Jewish brothers and sisters over in Israel and around the world. Shalom.